Hello and welcome. In this video, we will learn about the first three inputs, the minimum size, maximum size and growth rate in the generate the surface mesh task of the watertight geometry workflow. We will discuss how to choose appropriate values for these inputs and understand their influence on the obtained surface mesh. Are you interested? Let's get started. The generate the surface mesh is the third major task in the watertight geometry workflow and as the name suggests, it involves generating a mesh over the surfaces of an imported CAD geometry or remesh an imported surface mesh using pre-existing size fields or size control files. Surface meshes are used to define the computational region or volume for the CFD analysis and lay the foundation for generating a high quality volume mesh for CFD analysis. It is important not only to generate a good quality surface mesh, but also to refine the mesh in key areas to capture the correct flow physics. Unlike the add local sizing task that locally controls the mesh on selected entities, the inputs under the generate surface mesh are globally applied to all surfaces. This is irrespective of whether it is a fluid or a solid region. For solid regions, these global sizes will apply on all of the surfaces, including the non-vetted surfaces that may not be useful in fluid flow analysis. To reduce the mesh generation time, as well as to optimize the use of computational resources, care must be taken to clean, simplify, and remove unnecessary features from the solid CAD before importing it into the workflow. This task also helps in identifying the regions in the imported CAD or mesh file that will later be used to create the volume mesh. Launch a fresh instance of ANSYS Fluent Meshing in double precision. Note that Fluent Meshing always launches in double precision. The double precision option here applies to the solver. Use the drop down menu to start the watertight geometry workflow. In this video, we will use the solid CAD geometry of a stop valve with inlet and outlet elbows. Let's leave the units to the default and select the CAD file as shown to import the geometry into the workflow. We will not add any local sizing tasks here and focus our attention on the generate the surface mesh task. Since we are not using any custom size field or control files, let's leave the setting to the default no. The next two fields are the minimum and the maximum size. As indicated by their names, they specify the minimum and maximum sizes respectively of the elements for the surface mesh. These refer to the tangential sizes along the surface and are pre-populated by default based on the size of the bounding box for the domain. In most cases, these default values are sufficient to generate a good surface mesh. However, users can change these values as needed. Care should be taken to set the minimum size small enough to allow resolution on the smaller CAD features of interest. It is important to ensure that the model is properly scaled by selecting the appropriate units during the import and the global minimum size is at least 0.01 to avoid numerical problems during mesh generation. Let us modify the default value and use 0.25 mm here to better resolve the smaller features of this geometry. Let's now come back to our discussion on the maximum size. The value of the maximum size depends on the geometry you're meshing. For example, to model an internal flow problem such as flow through this valve, it is recommended that the maximum size should be less than 10% of the distance across the cross-section. 
This ensures sufficient resolution of the flow. Having said that, this value ultimately depends on the final application being modeled as well as the level of accuracy desired. To find this distance, let's pick the node selection filter. Right click on the location you wish to select a node as shown. You will notice a small red circle highlighting your selection. Now, Pick another node that is diametrically opposite to your first selection by right-clicking again. After we have picked both nodes, click on the Distance tool under the Examine options or press Ctrl D. The distance between the two nodes is displayed in the graphics window as shown. If users desire to calculate the distance between a different set of nodes, it is important to clear the user selections in the graphical window. We can either use the function key F2 or hit the clear selection option for this. Based on the measured distance, we will use a value of 5 millimeters for the maximum size. Let's leave all the other settings to their default values and click on the generate the surface mesh. It is important to understand that these minimum and maximum sizes are being applied to the curvature and the proximity size function, which we will learn about in a different video. We can vary the minimum and maximum sizes to refine or coarsen the surface mesh. When doing this, it is very critical to pay attention to the quality of the surface mesh, which is printed to the Fluent Meshing console every time a new mesh is generated. Let's click on edit to go back to the surface mesh settings to understand the growth rate option. It refers to the increase in the element edge length with each succeeding layer of elements. It defines the rate at which the surface mesh elements increase along each successive layer. To understand the growth rate better, we will create three surface meshes with growth rate values 1.05, 1.2 and 1.3 respectively. For this, we will leave the rest of the values as shown here. Let's now compare the three surface meshes side by side. Lowering this value closer to 1 would achieve a finer mesh resolution further away from the boundary. But this refinement comes with a heavy increase in the overall computational cost. Also, the use of the body of influence is recommended if a growth rate lower than 1.05 is desired. Increasing the growth rate value beyond 1.2 will coarsen the surface mesh and must be used with caution. Growth rate values greater than 1.4 should be rarely used. Before wrapping up this lesson, let us quickly review our learning. We understood the importance of generating a high quality surface mesh and its effect on the volume mesh. We learned about the minimum size and maximum size and growth rate options and discussed some pointers on how to pick these numbers. That brings us to the end of our lesson.